our culture convicts people every day to charges of conspiracy in our legal systems. But for some reason, those of the upper echelons of the power seem to get a pass. Throughout the ages, it has always been understood that those in power seek more control. Whether it's religious expansion, imperial expansion, colonial expansion, military expansion, it's about taking over land and valuables, declaring control, indoctrinating the people into your system of beliefs. Good men judge the world by the way they live it themselves. Evil men greatly depend on good men to believe this because they manipulate, take advantage of, oppress, and loot off the honest. September 11th is the catalyst that changed America forever. Were there any state sponsors involved with the attacks of September 11th? The official version of 9-11 maintains no foreign governments or domestic authorities were complicit with the attacks or involved in the cover-up of September 11th. This investigation will explore the overwhelming evidence that foreign governments intelligence agencies played a substantial role in some way in the attacks. Our story starts with Dr. David Graham, a dentist in Shreveport, Louisiana, who met a Pakistani man who housed two future 9-11 hijackers who turned out to be Saudi intelligence agents. The question is, who was in the shadows of September 11th? He met three of the 9-11 hijackers in Shreveport a year before the attacks. This morning, local dentist David Graham is dead after the family says he was poisoned more than two years ago. At the time, Graham was trying to publish a manuscript about meeting three Middle Easterners in Shreveport. He feared they were plotting to bomb Barksdale. Graham wrote that he warned the FBI. Then after 9-11, he saw their pictures among the hijackers. Dr. David Graham had alerted Representative Congressman Jim McCrary who in turn gave the information over to a member of the Joint Select Committee on Intelligence, Saxby Chambliss. Graham was detailing the fact that he contacted the FBI about three men who would later become 9-11 hijackers that Graham had observed planning terrorism 10 months prior to 9-11. Muslim, Arab, Arab type fellows, and uh, what you're about to hear is, uh, is, is very disturbing, and uh, I hope it gets to the Intelligence Committee. It's going to be, uh, the Senate's going to be, I believe, hearing all the reports of uh, some ways that we can improve the handling of 9-11-01, uh, should it happen again, something of that nature. Like Representative Chambliss wrote back to Graham that he had given the information to Chairman of the House Permanent Select Committee on Intelligence, Porter Goss. In the fall of 2000, Dr. Graham inadvertently met the future 9-11 hijackers in Shreveport, Louisiana. In front of Nawaf Al Hazmi. And uh, the picture I saw after 9 11 in USA Today is the same look he gave me and stared at me like this for about 10 minutes. I mean, his eyes were piercing right through me, no smile, no crack of anything. You might want to focus in on this picture. Now, he was clean shaven when I saw him, uh, this fellow right here, Nawaf Al Hazmi. This appeared October 5th, 2001 in USA Today. And trust me, that is the guy I was looking at in 3521 Eastwood Drive in Mohammed Jamal Khan's apartment. It was definitely the same man. Graham made a video will to detail his story and provide his evidence. For he speculated that he was not going to be taken seriously by Porter Goss for his whistle blowing. He feared for his life after clandestinely recording himself and a Pakistani man, Jamal Khan, who Graham claimed hosted three of the 9-11 hijackers. Before Graham was poisoned, he was supposed to testify at a deportation hearing against a Pakistani man, Jamal Khan, who hosted the men Graham believed to be the hijackers. 
Khan was from an area of Pakistan in the north, known to be very sympathetic to bin Laden, and also where many believe bin Laden was hiding. Graham provided all the evidence for his story in the video. And uh, I got a map, and I saw where Karachi was down on the coast. When I talked to Jamal the next day, I said, Jamal, I said, is your family, is your father, is this place down on, down on the coastline? I love the big boats. I like to go out on those big boats. He said, oh, no, 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 no. My father's place is up, is up by the China Wall. And uh, he, he, he said it's up by the China Wall uh, over by Russia. So this little yellow spot I've outlined here, there's some little cities up there I'd like to mention that are possibly uh, significant to, to where maybe bin Laden could be hiding. And that's what uh, Agent Spoon after 9-11 indicated to me. Graham initially feared a truck bombing on Barksdale Air Force Base due to the suspicious red flags he was observing with men he remotely associated with. Graham reported to both a Shreveport FBI agent and a U.S. Secret Service agent the information almost a year before 9-11. Within the Graham report, a book David wrote detailing his story so that the public would know this scandal. He details and provides the dated and certified documents that the FBI had names of two 9-11 ringleaders, Nawaf al-Hazmi and Khalid al-Midar. But in terms of 9-11, in terms of them going after somebody in the Bible Belt, who you know was a conservative, Christian, megachurch, evangelical, I mean, that's really desperate that they have to kill somebody like that. Uh, but he was on the verge of publishing a book, and his book was going to tell, talk about this 40-year ordeal that he had had uh, when he, he met Nawaf al-Hazmi and had an association with somebody who knew Khalid Almidar. And Almidar and al-Hazmi, we know now, according to the 9-11 Commission report and others, were two of the lead hijackers. It wasn't just about Muhammad Atta. It was about these two guys. We know now that...